Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to tell you all of the books that I think were the best that I read in 2022. I read a total of, I want to say, like 125-ish books. I did not have a particularly amazing reading year. I felt like I really had a great 2020 and 2021 and 2022 was just okay. I definitely read some good things but a lot of the good things that I read were towards the beginning of the year and then like the later half of my year really I struggled um, to not be so critical of everything that I was reading. I don't know if it was my mental state or if it was just the books but um, I'm here to tell you all of the books that I really enjoyed. I think I ended up putting together a list of like 30 books and I'll divide them between fiction, nonfiction, and graphic novels and memoirs. First, I'm going to talk to you about my fiction. I divided this into three little sections. One of them is just like my top, top fiction of the year. Then I would say kind of like my second tier uh, adult fiction reading of the year and then the third is kids fiction that I enjoyed So let's start with like my top tier adult fiction books that I read Probably my favorite book that I read all year is one that I read probably in the first two weeks of 2022 And that's Oh Beautiful by Young Yoon. I don't know. It just had everything that I look for in adult fiction books It was very serious and moody and gritty and hard The main character is having a tough time and she's trying to overcome It's a lot a book really a lot about intersectionality and and how her lived experience is the way that it is because of all of the things that make up her identity. This book takes place in the Dakotas and it follows the main character who goes back to the town where she kind of grew up. This town has changed a lot in the past decade as more natural gas companies are coming in and there's a really big oil boom that is changing the way that the town acts, looks. Um, this is a character study. It's a very slow book. It's not a book that is particularly focused on plot. I love character studies and I really loved this main character. The second book that I really really loved was Mary Jane. This is a book that follows a main character coming of age. She is nannying for a family that lives in her neighborhood and this family is made up of a psychiatrist and his wife having sessions with a rock and roll star staying with them at the house while they go through the sessions together. Um, and it follows Mary Jane watching all of these adults around her living life. Recognizing that adults still have issues, they don't have everything figured out, but it's also uh, this really closeted and protected girl discovering that there is more to life than what her mother has taught her this whole time. She is really witnessing um, like an openness to marriage and to like male and female relationships that is really fascinating to see from her eyes as someone who's raised really conservative. It's about found family as well and I think Mary Jane is so important to the story and I feel like she is so three-dimensional and really comes off the page. She is really likable but also um, someone that you can see changing as the novel is going on. The other book that I read that I really loved that I would say is like on my top tier of adult fiction books is out there and this is a book of short stories. I love this because it was kind of unlike anything that I've read before. It's speculative short stories so the stories really focus on the absurd but it does that by looking at things that are currently happening in our society today it looks at um, how women are seen and it looks at how we view our place in a capitalist society yeah some of them are just so strange but so satisfying when you get to the conclusion of the short story for example there's a short story that focuses on a man who moves into this house and this house is kind of creepy and it needs to be moistened so he literally like lotions the walls and it sounds bonkers but there is a point to what's happening um, and I really enjoyed it. There's also two stories, one at the front and one at the end of the collection that focuses on um, like basically AI created men who are kind of like robots but the way that they look and the way that they act basically being the archetype of what a woman wants a man to be. Now my second tier, these are like books that I enjoyed but weren't five stars or like four and a half star reads. These are just really enjoyable reads for a variety of reasons. And these are more like genre fiction compared to Oh Beautiful and Mary Jane, which were more like literary fiction. So one that I really, really enjoyed that I read towards the end of the year was Patricia Wants to Cuddle by Samantha Allen. This book was just like a fun romp 
really funny, really cynical, really satirical. It's a book that's basically a satire of the Bachelor franchise and it follows the four remaining contestants as they go to um, an island outside of Seattle. Basically they're gonna film like the end of the series here but some weird things have happened on this island and there have been some like missing women on this island as well. So you're following these four contestants who are very different but fit these molds that are created on The Bachelor. If you've ever watched the show, you know exactly what I mean about like the type of women. Also following the producer, what she is trying to make and portray out of these women. The women are selfish. The women are um, self-serving. They are trying to up their own brand a lot of the time. But at the same time, I felt for them and I like, saw where they were coming from as well. Really what made this book go to another level for me is like the horror aspect of it. There were a lot of interesting twists and turns towards the end of the story and a lot of consequences that I didn't necessarily expect to happen to the characters that were there. Smart and thoughtful and saying something but also something that is not taking itself too seriously and is also fun and funny. I also really liked Flying Solo. I think I like this one more than Linda Holmes' first book. Flying Solo is a story about a woman who is coming back to the town that she grew up as she is taking care of her grandmother's estate. She reconnects with someone who she used to date that still lives there and also her friend that lives there as well, her best friend. It's just them trying to understand more about the main character's relative and all of the belongings that she had in this house, trying to discover more information about this duck decoy that they find in the house. It's a fun adventure and what I really most loved about this book is the banter between the characters. It was very comedic, lighthearted, and the way that they talked with each other just really flowed and was very seamless and fun. I also liked book lovers like everybody and their mother that read it. I think I like beach read more but I really enjoyed my time with book lovers especially with the two main characters and their backstory and kind of how they came together and the resolution of the story. I didn't care as much about the sister relationship in the story but I enjoyed this again a kind of like a small town going back to where you grew up enemies to lovers story. I don't have to sell book lovers to you, you've read it. And then last but not least I really enjoyed The Maid and this book it could have ended better but I think just like the singular voice that the main character had as she's trying to solve the this mystery it was very entertaining and I feel like when you think of mysteries and thrillers you think of a very cookie cutter main character I feel like this main character was different than a lot of main characters that I've read before as for the kids books that I really like this year I really loved a kind of spark I would say this was the best kids book that I read all year and this is a book that follows an autistic main character in Scotland as she is trying to understand more about her identity and her family how she thinks that people view her because of her autism, her connecting that to the way that witches were tried. It was full of heart. I really enjoyed the voice of the main character. I really enjoyed how the family took part in this. And I also really liked A Soft Place to Land. I really have enjoyed Janae Mark's books, um, but this was a book that I hadn't read before in the sense that it follows a family who is not making ends meet and they have to leave their house and they move into an apartment. And it's kind of like the sadness of basically kind of like going backwards in a way um, as one of the parents is out of a job and looking for a new job. At this apartment complex everybody really knows each other. It was really lovely to see just kind of like the neighborly aspect of everybody that is there. There's a lot of kids in this apartment complex so the main character gets to know other kids. There's aspects of the story that were unnecessary that maybe Janae Marks wanted kind of like a big reveal towards the end that I didn't feel was satisfactory or necessary but I still really enjoyed my time throughout all of this. There's a whole like dog walking business that happens as well and if you're just like realistic fiction kids books I would recommend this for sure another book of realistic fiction as you can tell this is what I love to read when it comes to kids books is those kids from Fong Creek this book I really enjoyed because it's basically all of the things that Aaron and Trotta Kelly does well so it follows a big cast of characters in this small town really there's not that much to do so a lot of the times the kids are just with each other it's a story about a girl who moves into the town and nobody really knows anything about her and everybody's really fascinated to learn more about her and to make her part of each of their cliques. They all have like issues with each other but they also all in a way see each other. 
because it's such a small town and you're always with them anyway. And that's it for my fiction books. So next I'm going to talk about my nonfiction books. And again, I kind of separated this this time into two tiers, kind of like the best of the best books and then kind of books that I really enjoyed that I think are worth your, your time if you're interested in what they're about. So the best nonfiction book that I read in 2022 is one that I talked on my channel about and that's Trailed. And this is a book of true crime. It's a narrative nonfiction look at an old case. The author is really searching out clues about who the killer might actually be. They tried somebody and they thought that they caught the person, but it is believed that that's probably not who did it. So she uncovers new information by going back and interviewing all the investigators, the police that were involved, and the families. What I most liked about this book is how it takes the true crime genre and really does something that is honorable and caring towards the victims and their families. Like this book would not exist if the go ahead wasn't given by the families because the families were on board we got to learn about them as people it's also just a really fascinating look at what it was like to be queer in the outdoors in the 90s it's not something that was seen usually it was couples or just men who were out in the outdoors it was interesting to read about kind of the history of queer women in the outdoors the author really puts herself in the story she inserts herself and I enjoy that when I feel like I can relate to the author I feel like if I were to write a book about a case that fascinates me. This is how I would come across as someone who is probably like a little bit too anxious to feel like they're doing a good enough job to make sure that um, you're doing these women justice. Another book that I love that really surprised me was Nobody's Victim. And this is a book of essays, I would say, about different cases that the author, who is a lawyer, has taken on, having to do with how people are taken advantage of on social media, how trolls proliferate, about sexual misconduct conduct um, about rape happening in conjunction with social media. A lot of these cases are things that I've heard about before and it was super interesting to hear about it from the lawyer. She is really, really fierce in the way that she came across in the audiobook. Just very strong willed and very like a smart aleck. Someone who is going to say it like it is and they don't care if they're coming across as crude or vulgar. She is just going to say it how it is. I feel like a lot of the times women who stand up for things like this are playing a game where we want to be perceived in a certain kind of way to be looked at as professionals to come across basically as like professionals you have to be a certain type of person a certain type of a meek person and for me Carrie Goldberg is like the antithesis of that she is just loud and I love that. Another book that I really enjoyed was Tell Me Everything and this I feel like is kind of a polarizing book. I also had like a polarized reaction to it of like I really love these parts of it and I really wish some of these parts were looked at differently or were treated differently but at the end of the day I, I was so interested in hearing the story and to understand that it's coming from a place of like true trauma and something that happened kind of like in my backyard too which is also fascinating to learn more about things that happened here in Colorado. It's a book that follows a woman investigator who is hired by this lawyer to look into and investigate a university that has players and their football team have been accused of rape. So she interviews a lot of the women that were involved and a lot of the witnesses too. And at the same time, the author is also looking at how she has been treated in her life when it comes to sexual violence against her and how complicated her relationship is with her mother because of things that have happened with her mother's husband. How your mother can disappoint you, how your mother can choose other people over you when you are their child. It's something that is very hard for me as someone who has always had a great relationship with her parents to understand but i know that it's something that happens and so it was fascinating to hear more about how the author dealt with that another book that i really loved is seeing ghosts this is a memoir that looks at the immigrant experience an npr reporter as she is looking back at her own life growing up here um, with parents that immigrated here in particular she's looking at the death of her mother and the grief that came from that as well as how her dad lives his life interesting is so relatable something that I really saw as like my my family also as an immigrant family and especially how she described her father and the kinds of things and businesses and ideas that her father really has about the American dream small business um, those are things that I definitely saw like parallels to in my life which I always really enjoy reading in immigrant memoirs it's definitely a book that is a little bit difficult to get into at first because she 
does switch back and forth between like first person and then also second person point of view but once you get the hang of it of what is happening i really really enjoyed my time with this book i also really enjoyed sandy hook it's not necessarily undertaking what happened at sandy hook in 2012 it's more so looking at what the family's lives have been like after in the past 10 years the author has been following a few of the families and it's also particularly a book about their experiences with conspiracy theorists from the way that i view what happened and like when it happened this was like at the beginning in my mind of when conspiracy theories were really proliferating online when it came to tragedies like this i also remember the boston marathon bombing also had that kind of aspect of it where like people on forums and online and on reddit really went wild that's what happened at sandy hook as well and it particularly focuses on alex jones part in this and all of the uh lawsuits that have been brought against him by the families and their success in getting him taken down and being deplatformed online i think what you come to to read this is to follow those families and to see how they have taken this very horrible thing that happened to them and how they have stood up for their own families um to say like enough is enough and like these kinds of things happening online they are not going to put up with i love the story here about lenny posner and his family he started this whole nonprofit that really looks at taking down conspiracy theories and basically lies online seeing kind of like his world view and the work that has been put in um to to make the online world a better place I think is something that is aspirational and um, just like interesting to hear his point of view. Definitely a somber read and definitely a read that maybe at times focused a little bit too much on the 2016 election results and it's something that I feel like has been overdone and I've read way too much about and I was way more fascinated in hearing about the families and what they're doing um, than I was in hearing about like how Donald Trump is friends with Alex Jones and how their worlds collided and you know made 2016 happen. I'm tired of hearing that story. The second kind of tier that I have are um, books that I really enjoyed but maybe didn't live up to that top tier and one of them is Everything I Need I Get From You. This is a book that I really don't recommend to everyone that's watching this. I only recommend it to someone who is a fangirl, a fangirl of One Direction, or used to be. Someone who used Tumblr a lot growing up, especially kind of in the time frame of like late 2000s to the mid 2010s. That's such a niche topic, okay? Like that is so specific. But I loved the analysis that was in this book. As someone who just like lived through this or was at least like tangentially outside of what was happening, it really called back a lot of things that I saw online and it really put into perspective to me how important it is to give analysis and a critical look at girls online. When you think about the culture at large, we don't really look at or think about how girls changed the online world, um, but they really did. Putting that importance on what teen girls can do when a lot of the times they are mocked or laughed at when it comes to their passions. Not something that I would recommend to everyone, but something that has remained with me this past year. It was funny and yeah, thought provoking, very thought provoking. Another book that I really enjoyed was The 2000s Made Me Gay. This is very similar to everything I need I get from you in that it focuses on very particular pop culture things in the 2000s, as you can tell from the title. A lot of the things that happened here are mostly like late 2000s, which I'm glad for because then I understood more of it. I feel like there are maybe a couple chapters that I didn't recognize, you know, that pop culture moment. And the author really uses that to talk about her own identity and place in the world um, and understanding her own queer identity. I also really enjoyed Super Pumped. This is a book that was kind of shocking. Probably the most shocking after Bad Blood and the Instagram book I read, No Filter. Super Pumped focuses on the rise of Uber, a company that I don't, I didn't really know that much about and it was really interesting to see how egomaniacal the main founder was. His idea of like world domination is at times impressive and also very very scary men who believe those things like they they'll literally do anything they'll break laws to get their ideas to fruition it's also focusing on the culture that was created at uber and also a lot of issues that uber top people had with the board members and basically how they got the founder and creator of uber out because of 
the way that he viewed everything and the way that he was trying to compose himself in public life. Interesting to see how investors were portrayed here and their place in this kind of ecosystem. I also really enjoyed Cultish and this is a book that was really interesting to me because as someone who's interested in cults, this is different. This is a book about things that are cult-ish, right? So ideas, companies, exercise, things that have cult-ish beliefs or create cult-ish beliefs in the people who follow them. Seeing um, the author kind of relay the terminology and the way that things are phrased and the way that enraptures the followers even more to be involved. There were aspects of it that leaned a little bit too much on the actual cults. Something happened in the middle of the book where I felt like this isn't really cultish, this is a little bit more cults. But still overall I learned a lot, especially about how language is used to get people to do things that you want them to do and to spend the money you want them to spend. I also enjoyed The Sewing Girl's Tale. This is kind of different from all the other books on this list because it is historical nonfiction. so it looks at something that happened early during the revolutionary war period but it focuses on another topic that i read a lot about and that is a woman's place especially when it comes to them being taken advantage of and basically seeking justice so it follows a woman she's a young woman she was like 16 or 17 the way that it was thought of back then is like there were some men who took advantage of women seduced them in ways and then raped them and what's really fascinating about this story is how women were viewed as property during that time. What has been written in law from the 1700s, 1800s is still something that reverberates in our laws today. So I just found it so fascinating to see how women were talked about in the courts by lawyers and basically how her stepfather, who is the, the man of the house that she was at, what happened to her was besmirching him first and foremost before it besmirched her and hurt her. This is a sad story honestly like a really sad story of a man who really was like getting away with a lot because he was privileged and had a lot of money um, and was well connected by his family but also uh, really sad in the sense of like what happened to Lana the girl that this happened to and all the struggles and mental issues that she faced as a result of all of this and for being basically the first rape trial to happen in the United States of America. I also really learned a lot from Between Two Kingdoms. This is a cancer memoir as well as a memoir about finding more about yourself, learning and growing, um, leaving one relationship for another, what cancer does to your family. Towards the end of the story, she travels around the United States and meets people that have been important to her journey so far. It was just a really um, evocative, raw, giving memoir of someone who is definitely so flawed um, but someone who at the same time you understand the pain and the struggle that they are going through and how sometimes when you are not feeling great you act out in many ways and then last but not least another nonfiction memoir that I enjoyed this year was I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy. Jeanette McCurdy had a very complicated relationship with her mother who basically forced her to become the breadwinner of her family as an actress on Nickelodeon and um, now she does not act and she has dealt with a lot of issues understanding what her mother put her through um, and coming to terms with who she actually is because her life was so dictated by her mother before she died. Told in a very dry, sarcastic way, I think the audiobook is the way to go. I don't know if it would land reading it. I'm excited and interested to read what else she, she wants to write. Last but not least is graphic novels and memoirs. So I'm going to talk to you about my graphic novels first. They're actually kind of all kids books except maybe two and then I'll talk to you a little bit about graphic and memoirs. Kids graphic novels that I really enjoyed this year, um, one was the golden hour this is a book that focuses on ptsd it follows the main character as he suffers from ptsd from a gun violence incident that happened at his school what i really loved about this book is how the main character finds new friends these two friends are so sweet so caring thoughtful really give him the space to be himself to grieve and to speak out loud what he is feeling i feel like the setting was really interesting because it's kind of a more rural area and they take part in a 4-h competition so there's like animals that they're taking care of and stuff. Also that means that a lot of the illustrations that you see are very pastoral and a lot of like scenes of sunsets and things like that which were really beautiful to look at. I also really enjoyed Isla to Island. This is a book that focuses on a main character moving from Cuba during the beginning of the rise of Fidel Castro's regime. They had these charities that took Catholic children to New York and in New York they put them with a 
foster family and it really looks at how the main character is feeling being taken away from the color and vibrancy of her town of her area and being put in a place that is so foreign to her which is New York City the whole graphic novel is told uh, with very very minimal words it's a very wordless graphic novel and it also is one that is black and white and then turns into color the wordless aspects of it and the coloring was really indicative of the, the larger story and the larger meaning of the whole story very beautiful and very moving and touching um, really interesting also at the end when they explain kind of the background history of where this idea came from because it's based off real stories that happened to kids in the 1960s I also really enjoyed frizzy this is a book about loving yourself and loving your hair how the main character has been basically forced by her mom every week to go to the salon to get her hair straightened and to not be frizzy and big the main character obviously does not enjoy this experience it's painful and she needs to look a specific way to be accepted by society and to be accepted by her mother really of course there is an aunt in this book that really changes her ideas about how she should see herself and her hair teaches her about curly hair it comes to a really satisfying conclusion i would say maybe a little bit too cool corny maybe a little bit too easy still a book that I closed and I just felt like oh it touched my heart and I'm so glad that the main character found these things about herself um, I also really enjoyed Miss Quinces this is similar in the sense that it's a girl of Latina background trying to understand who she is and she doesn't really know how her everyday American life fits into how she views herself as a, a Latina girl her and her family go to their home country and they plan the main character is Quinceañera extended family being there her grandmother again like Frizzy it has a lot of conflict between the mother and the daughter but obviously it comes from a place of love and at the end the mother and daughter come together as this happens often in kids graphic novels those are all the kids graphic novels i also really enjoyed ain't burned all the bright this was just like beautiful like perfect a book that uses the COVID experience that we had in 2020 um, as well as the George Floyd protests to describe what the family is going through and health issues and racism and all those kinds of things like making you feel claustrophobic in your own house like you can't go anywhere because you will not be safe very poetic because it's done by Jason Reynolds I love the collaging too by Jason Griffin for graphic memoirs I have I really enjoyed my begging charts. This is more like a collection of graphic memoirs. This is a look into the author's own life. It has to do a lot with having kids. It has to do a lot with marriage, uh, mental health, that the author, she's facing some um, issues with her mental health. It also looked a little bit at COVID and quarantine and being away from other people in the tone and the humor that was used. Again, very dry, sarcastic, a little bit absurd poignant I would say also really thoughtful in the way that it describes mental health and having kids and having kids during quarantining at the beginning of COVID I also really loved seek you this is a what is this I would say it's like a collection of ideas about loneliness in the United States it's a book that focuses on the history of loneliness how scientists have studied it over time basically how hard it is in today's day and age with social media and phones and the way that our cities and our neighborhoods are set up to how that feels very isolating at times the author does a great job at relating things that have happened historically to our days and lives today i closed this book and i just thought it was one of the most thought-provoking things that I read in 2022 and how important social ties are to our mental well-being. Like we are social creatures and we need to be with other people. I also really loved Hakim's Odyssey, the series. I've read two of them. I think I have one left to read. This is a refugee memoir and the author of it the author and illustrator of it is interviewing the refugee that is the titular character hakim him and his family move and leave syria after the civil war that happened there and their very very long journey to get to where they are today in france it's fascinating to see kind of like all of the little things that he had to do to get to where he is how his family is doing still being in syria also his growing family he marries and has kids throughout this journey 
journey. Very kind-hearted the way that Hakim tells his story. Also just makes you understand the plight of refugees. Um, I think it's a really, really important story to hear and I'm really excited to read the last one. I also really liked Save It For Later. This is a collection of short essays, short illustrated essays I would say, about living in post-Trump America, what life is like after all of that has happened, and how you talk to your kids about how it is that someone like that could get elected to be president of the United States, how kids should understand the people that are in their neighborhood that believe these things. He also really looks at how living in a red area, how he takes up protests and how he involves his children in protests. It's done by one of the creators of the John Lewis uh, March series, so it has that same style. Last but not least, I really liked Numb to This. This is a graphic memoir uh, about one of the survivors of the Umqua College shooting in 2015 in Oregon. And it looks at the weeks and then months and then years after this, that one very short event that she didn't even see the shooter. She didn't even, nothing like that happened to her. She was just kind of in the area as it happened. How that still has affected her so much. How reading the news and being online every few months, you get another notification that something like this has happened somewhere else. What that means to a survivor in their journey of healing, how that has created mental health struggles, including societal ideation. It's very visceral. There's a lot of pictures that you see of how her body feels and how her mind feels. I really enjoyed learning her story. I hope that she creates more graphic novels. If you read any of these or would like to read any of these, let me know down below. Or if any of these made your best of list, also let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.